Hi listeners, stories have so much power and so does whoever controls the narrative. It is time that we dissect and analyze these stories. I am Vipul and this is Vogue Tales. Hi everyone, The Donkey Lettuce is a German fairy tale from the 1981 collection, A Book of Witches, by Ruth Manning Sanders. Just because I'm introducing you to this story doesn't mean I approve of it. It just means that if I have to think about it every time I eat lettuce, so do you. On that note, it's story time. A young hunter meets an old woman in the woods. Though he does not have much money in his pocket, he gives her what he can, and as a reward, she gives him some weird advice. Walk on this path to the left, she instructs, and very soon you will come to a tree in which nine birds will be sitting, quarreling over a cloak which they hold in their claws. Take aim with your gun and shoot up into the midst of them. They will let the cloak fall, and one of the birds will drop down dead. The cloak, the old woman explains, will carry the hunter wherever he wishes to go, and if he swallows the heart of the dead bird, he will wake up each day to a gold coin beneath his pillow. The hunter is not sure whether to believe her or not, but well, no harm in finding out, except obviously to the birds. So he heads off to the indicated path and sure enough, there are nine birds, all clutching and pecking at the cloak. Following the old woman's instructions, the hunter claims both cloak and heart and wishes himself straight home, where he soon sleeps up a fortune to look after his parents in their old age. After that, he decides to go traveling. In time, he comes to a plain and across it a castle, and in the castle lives a very beautiful daughter of a witch. The hunter does not realize that the girl's mother is a witch, but the witch certainly knows all about him. She wants that hat out of him and threatens to break every bone in her daughter's body if the girl does not help. The hunter is an easy mark. He spends a few days staring at the witch's daughter before blurting out a proposal of marriage. The witch prepares a potion. The girl very reluctantly give it to her fiancé and as soon as he drinks it, the bird's heart fall out of his mouth. He doesn't even notice. So the witch's daughter is now the one waking up with gold beneath her pillow. Not that it does her any good, because of course, her mother grabs the lot. Nor is the witch stopping there. The hunter still has a magical treasure in his possession, after all. With aggressive inducement from her mother, the girl convinces the hunter to take her to a tall mountain where beautiful jewels just lie around like flowers. They fill their pockets and soon the hunter falls into an enchanted sleep. The girl tries to wake him, but he will not stir. She wraps herself in his cloak and tearfully returns to her mother, abandoning her lover to his fate. The fate involves giants, three of them who live on the mountain and gather the precious stones themselves. When the hunter wakes up, and while he is still coming to grips with how he has been betrayed, the giants come stomping along and notice him lying there. One is in favor of squashing him. Another is more lenient, remarking that if he keeps climbing the mountain, the clouds at the top will carry him away. So that's what the hunter does, and the clouds take him to a beautiful garden. It is worth being suspicious of beautiful gardens and fairy tales, but the hunter is hungry. He goes to a bed of lettuces, starts eating, and turns into a donkey. He takes it quite well. He grazes his way across the garden and eventually comes to a second bed of lettuces. 
when he eats the leaves from this bed, he turns back into a human, full of vengeful determination. The hunter heads to the witch's castle, armed with the head of each lettuce. He disguises himself by cutting his hair very short and staining his skin very brown with berry juice. And however weak a masquerade that sounds, it works. The witch believes his story about being a king's messenger and offers him a night's lodging in exchange for a meal of what he claims to be the finest salad in the land. She goes to prepare it but cannot resist a secret taste and promptly turns into a donkey. Next, a maidservant goes to fetch the salad to serve to the witch's daughter and she too has to try just one leaf, which makes two donkeys. The hunter goes down to fetch the salad himself and brings it up to his ex-girlfriend, who does not recognize him any more than her mother did. She eats the salad, and that makes three donkeys. That's just the start of the hunter's revenge. Taking the three donkeys to a mill, he orders that the witch be given one meal a day and three beatings that the maidservant be given three meals and one beating, and the witch's daughter to be given three meals and no beating, for sentiment's sake, though he thinks she deserves it. The hunter then goes back to the witch's castle to brood. The witch, unsurprisingly, is dead by the end of the week. Her daughter and maid are in such a miserable state that the mill owner warns the hunter he thinks they will not last much longer either. The hunter decides to relent. He grants them both a taste of the other lettuce and they turn back into women. The witch's daughter gabbles out desperate apologies, offering to return both cloak and heart. But the hunter announces she can keep them because he's going to marry her. The end. Yikes. That's really all I have to say. That and I sincerely hope the poor maid gets a new job fast. On that note, bye for now. Let me know your thoughts on the story and our discussion by emailing me on woketalespodcast at gmail.com or through social media at woketalespodcast on Instagram and woketalespod on Twitter. And please rate, review, and like Woketales Podcast. And don't forget to subscribe so you can easily access our weekly stories. If you have any story recommendations or if you want to come dissect and analyze a story with me, Give me a shout out on email or social media, because whatever you do, keep dissecting and keep analyzing. <laughs>